just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like gotta made it Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graving Team keep it clean Freelancer in the building What's up baby Welcome to another episode Of Question from Subs This is a series Where you can ask any question You want to And we answer in a video Like this If you want to be part of it For the team keep it clean Patrons You can see your questions Directly on Patreon If you want to sign up To become a team keep it clean Patreon You can go to Patreon.com Slash engraving vids And if not You can send your questions To team keep it clean At gmail.com And we'll hopefully Answer it in a video Like this I love y'all I appreciate y'all I went to sleep Early last night because I thought I was feeling like a little bit sick But I, told, I was telling my wife and I don't think I'm getting sick I think I'm just tired man I'm tired Because as y'all know my sleep schedule is all over the place It's all kinds of messed up um, So I took some NyQuil So I could get some good sleep Because if I don't like take anything Which I never do um, Then my sleep is like I, I'll go to sleep But then I always end up waking up Like 3, 4 in the morning And sleep My sleep be just all messed up If I drink some tea or something that helps sometimes, but a lot of times it just it won't even help. Uh, but anyway, I, I did take the night quill last night and I got some good sleep. But I woke up early and I was like, you know what? I'm up early. Well, let's just do some questions from school. That, well, why not? But anyway, I love y'all. Now, um, of course, Lamar Jackson. Uh, Future was down here last night. Future was down here last night, and uh, I know DJ Khaled was and Meek Mill and a bunch of them, um, City Girls and whatnot. And uh, Lamar Jackson was there. And I, I saw I saw some Ravens fans. They they saw uh, man, what's his name? Fat fat boy something. The one who 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 uh I ain't never seen a fat boy get on the roof. I, like people from Florida will know what I'm talking about and who I'm talking about. Um, but it's this dude that dances to to Florida music on a roof. He got a shirt off, big dude or whatnot. But he was there. I think it's Fat Boy Snacks. I think that's his name. But anyway. Um, he was there and he was next to Lamar Jackson and, and Lamar uh, had his Ravens chain on And I, I know every time any Ravens fans see Lamar with his Ravens chain on They start going crazy What happens when he takes it off? <laughs> Look man, I, I know like a lot of us We, we want something to, to let it be known to, to make it be known that Lamar Jackson is staying but look, I, I I can't get hype off of no Instagram video with he holding his chain. It's his chain. He gonna wear it. This is that's this is chain. So anyway, um, I know uh Fat Boy asked him if if he asked Lamar if Lamar was staying. If or no, if Lamar was coming back, and Lamar said something. Then Lamar was like, "It's happening." And something. But to me, I didn't I didn't really feel like Lamar was really answering because you know Lamar be trolling. You know he be trolling. But well, what are you gonna say? No. He, he gonna say, oh, no, I ain't going back on an Instagram video And he know that the video is gonna get posted And he know people are gonna check for it He know people are gonna see it Like, he ain't stupid, man Like, he gonna say, hey, hey, Lamar, you coming back? No, I ain't going back But, anyway, I, I just thought it was funny Um, <laughs> first question <laughs> First question came from my guy, Phil he said, draft an offer sheet. Indianapolis waived Matt Ryan and traded Stephon Gilmore to clear plenty of cap space. Now, I know they signed uh, Gardner Minshew to a one-year, $3 million deal, which I believe is as a backup QB. If Indianapolis was to make a move to give an offer sheet to Lamar before the draft, if you were GM, would you take their number four pick? Oof. You, oh, boy. Uh, if I was a GM, no. I would have had Lamar locked up a long time ago if I was GM. But... That's me. Anyway, uh, he said, rarely has Baltimore had an opportunity with a draft pick that high because they never tank. Where EDC would have the opportunity to trade back a few spots for an extra second round pick, then draft one of the top cornerbacks, uh, Gonzalez or, uh, from Oregon, or with a spoon from Illinois, then at 22, take a receiver. Hopefully someone like Quentin Johnson from TCU uh, or JSN from Ohio State or Flowers from BC. Or Jordan Addison from USC. Then in the second or third round, take a quarterback like Hooker from Tennessee, Stetson Bennett from Georgia. Look, man, let me tell you about Stetson Bennett. It's like I feel like all Ravens fans should know he's going to the Ravens one way or another. Whether it's drafted, undrafted, whatever, he's going to make his way to the Ravens. It's happening. Like, it, it just it, it's going to happen. So, anyway, um, he said, or Duggan from TCU. What do you think? Take care and later. All right, what a way to get us started. Um, so 
I, I no, I would not take it because again, I, I would have Lamar locked up. This this thing would have been taken care of if I was GM. But um, if they decide not to uh, lock Lamar up, then I mean, yeah. But see, the thing is, say for instance, Colts were to sign him to an offer sheet, and Ravens didn't match. Just a scenario. Um, he would obviously go to the Colts. Ravens would get the Colts first round pick this year and a first round pick next year as well. Now, let me tell you, if Lamar goes to the Colts, that first round pick next year is going to be a lot lower. Still be a first round pick, but it'll be a way lower. But anyway, um, with if the Ravens had the number four pick, like you mentioned, yeah, they would have a high pick and they could trade back to still keep a first round pick and get some additional picks as well. EDC would have to hit on those. Ravens would have to hit on those picks Because in my opinion There's nothing that's worth Trading Lamar um, But if you end up Trading Lamar Your drafts better be perfect They have to be They have to be perfect You cannot miss on anything We talked about this before That with um, <clears throat> Excuse me with even if they keep Lamar, the the drafts they just need to be better, need to be more impactful. But especially if you decide, all right, somebody signed to offer sheet not gonna match, or if you decide to trade them away, those draft picks better be on point. You better hit on it. You better knock the draft way out the park, past the park. You bet you, you got to knock it out because. You, if you trade away Lamar, it's like, okay, what, what you going to do now? And, and it better be on point. Kick the season already. Next question came from my boy Rodell. He said, my guy, glad to see you doing better. This situation will not only work itself out, but bigger and better things are coming your way as well. Now, only if this other situation could work itself out. <laughs> hey, I hope so. I, I, I really do hope so. Um, and, yeah, we'll see in, what, today the 18th? So we'll see in, like, five days. We'll see five days and change or whatnot. It's depending on how long they take with that. So, We'll see, man. I do. I obviously hoping for the best, and um, we'll see how it goes. And I, of course, let y'all know. Uh, he said, "So as you know, being a Ravens fan is truly weird. It's like going into a season, uh, going into a season, they won't. Uh, you know, they won't hit rock bottom, but they won't be sky high either. They will literally coast in the middle. Mm. They may look like a below average team for half the season, and the other half of the season, top caliber. But where I'm getting at is, should we kick this upcoming season already? Since our Bengals playoff loss has been absolute chaos. Like this feels like unfamiliar territory with all these ab abnormal headlines we are making. Yeah, it's crazy. It's been something, and <laughs> a lot of it hasn't been good. Like even even yesterday, yesterday, um, I saw a video. Somebody recorded it, screen recorded it from a Twitter space. I and, and I sent it to my boy Meech. I said, "Man, I said Ravens. Like, <laughs> I said even even the Ravens receptionists are struggling right now. They even going through it because." There were some Bengals fans that prank called the Ravens uh, office, the Ravens head coach Owen Mills. They um and uh, the and they he didn't when he called he was like he acted like he was a Ravens season ticket holder, and he called the receptionist picked up. She's like Baltimore Ravens or something like that, and he was like, hey, uh, he was like, do, do we have any word on Lamar? Has Lamar resigned yet? And she was like, we we won't when when you hear something, that's when we hear something. We don't hear anything till you hear anything. And he was like, oh, I'm a season ticket holder, and da 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 and he's just joking. And it wasn't nothing malicious or anything like that. But then he was like, um, when when they, when, before before she even picked up, though, what the, what the saddest part was, and I was like, whoa, hold up, <laughs> so something needs to be updated, baby. But before she even picked up, the the whole music, the, the, the um, not the whole music, but the, uh, the automated message when they put you on hold, it was uh, Mink talking about, the upcoming playoff game against the Cincinnati Bengals. And I said, they really ain't update that from way back then? That was over a month ago. That was like a month and a half ago. Hold up, that was in January. We, we, in, we at the end of March. That was two months ago. That was two months ago. I said, yikes, what's going on here? But um, anyway, she, she was really, really nice. Uh, really, really nice receptionist. But I said, man, they, they, they got to fix that. But anyway, um. He said, uh, all these abnormal headlines we are making. J.K. publicly coming out. Yeah, and, and, and a, a running back being upset with a running scheme with a team that runs the ball. You know that's a problem then. 
Um, Bateman. Oh yeah, Bateman. <laughs> yeah, we ain't gotta get into it. Uh, Lamar with the direct, indirect sub tweets. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a little bit of both, especially them direct ones. Uh, not only does the locker room feel lost and is lacking a leader, but the organization feels unbalanced and out of whack. Oh yeah, cause they're going through it. They're going through it. Uh, anyway, he said EDC saying one thing, Hobbs saying another, Ozzy assuring another, and Bishotti out of sight. Our division is no longer a guarantee to win, and the AFC as a whole just got a lot tougher. Yeah, and Aaron Rodgers one day, any day now, Aaron Rodgers coming to town. Um, so, yeah, Patrick Mahomes obviously still there. Josh Allen still there. Tua could be healthy. He, he going to be there. Um we uh yeah, Joe Burrow obviously there. Deshaun Watson, um, he should be better this season. So yeah, Ravens got yeah. Anyway. Um us barely making a wild card seed and losing is failure. A divisional round playoff loss would be failure. Heck, I feel like AFC championship loss would be failure. So obviously I feel like it's Super Bowl or bust. However, I don't feel like we are close to being that team. Yeah, I I, I can agree right now. Um, the offseason still got a while to go. They could still obviously make some moves. A lot could change between now and September. It's March. It's March. It's six months left. To, wow. Hold up. I'm tripping. Yeah, yeah, six months left um, till September. Um, so it's early, but I know um, it's funny because every uh, offseason, uh, especially recently, if Ravens are slow to do something, slow to make moves. A lot of people say, oh, it's it's early, it's early. In the season, um, if Ravens look like they're struggling, they're they struggling with a certain aspect of their game, people will say, it's, it's early, it's early. And I've said it myself, too. i would be like, it's early, there's no reason to trip yet. But then as it goes late into the season, so, it ain't so early no more. But anyway, um, continuing. He said, the obvious downfall is our offense, and the only cure that will make me change my mind is a catastrophic fairy tale fix. So right now it is technically still early, um, but obviously so much is centered and, and the focus point is Lamar Jackson and, and what's going to happen with him. Until a resolution is re reached with that, I I can't expect nothing to happen. Can't expect no like significant moves to be made. I can't expect no catastrophic seismic moves to happen. Or anything like that. So I'm chilling too, man. I mean, and and right now my expectations are low. Um, but it's like I'm. That's so I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Like, oh, oh, hey, Ravens make a move. Ravens do something here, there. Okay, cool. Let's 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 see. Let's see. So far, it's been like I don't want to say small moves have been made, but it's been um, they've been solid moves. Nothing too crazy. Like brought back Justice Hill. Okay, I was cool with that. Um, brought back Geno Star. I was cool with that. Resigned long, long snapper Nick Moore. Oh, okay, cool. No problem. And. Oh yeah, they uh, brought back Well, brought back, brought in uh, Trayvon Mullen like, Okay, depth cornerback Okay, cool So nothing crazy Not no expensive move I know some people were tripping off the Justice Hill move They're like, hey, why uh, We don't even got our quarterback back And we re-signing a backup running back Why are we putting money into that? It is a backup running back It's also a special team It's a gunner It's a return man um, it's, it's one of those all of the above type of things Anyway He said um, <clears throat> The obvious downfall is our offense And the only cure That will make me change my mind Is a catastrophic fairy tale fix Which is Trade for one of Mike Evans Or Nuke Hopkins Sign Odell Beckham Jr. Or Adam Thielen Oh And draft the wide receiver round one Okay So you The above uh, For me I, 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 would, I would take out the Adam Thielen part I'm, I, I don't know man I just if they signed him, all right, cool, whatever. But I just, uh, I just, no, I don't, mm, mm, that's, I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. It, it, it just wouldn't move me like that. Yeah, maybe it's just me, but if they signed Adam Thielen, okay, cool. I mean, he's better than a lot of what we have, but that could not be it. But, but you're saying all three of these. I like that thinking. Uh, so he said, trade for Mike Evans or DeAndre Hopkins, plus sign Odell Beckham Jr. or Adam Thielen. 
and draft a wide receiver round one. See, he put and in all caps to make sure that I knew when I was reading this that that and the, the commas, the commas, um, they make a list and the and it adds to that list. So he, he wanted to make sure that he was listing all these things to happen, not one or the other. So I appreciate that. He said that is what I call a wide receiver room makeover. And while I would believe we would become a totally different threat. A Super Bowl still isn't guaranteed. I mean, we've seen Mike McDonald's up and downs in his rookie debut as a defensive coordinator. A completely rebuilt wide receiver room with a first-year OC going to the Super Bowl seems unlikely. As the team currently stands today, March 17th, it's not Super Bowl ready. Oh, no. I, yeah, I don't think anybody thinks this team is Super Bowl ready right now. I don't think anybody realistically thinks that. I, obviously, we would hope it, but I don't think anybody realistically thinks that this Ravens team right now is a Super Bowl team. But again... There's still a lot of time. It's, it's time to change that. So Ravens have a lot of opportunity to change that. So uh, he said, I'm almost 100% sure we will not make enough moves to ensure a Super Bowl caliber team. Remember, we will a absolutely compete. We will not contend. Oof. So, um, and <coughs> again, we'll see. We'll see. We got to uh, wait it out. And see how the remainder of this offseason goes. Next question came from my guy Kimpachi. He said, Lamar Jackson's contract. Hey, Graven, I got a question that I'd like your opinion on. Now that Deshaun Watson has restructured his contract, do you think that will affect the dollar amount that Lamar is asking for? Or maybe the Ravens will use that as leverage to keep number crunching these offers. Um, do I think that'll affect the what Lamar's asking for? No. I I don't. Um, I don't uh, Because Lamar could still be like Hey I want this much guaranteed up front Like straight up Not injury guarantee Not if I'm on a roster on the third day of the league year In 2026 No not I want it guaranteed straight up Straight up Now um, granted I, I was talking to my boy Kev about this uh, A couple of days ago With uh, apparently What some of these contracts were That Lamar Jackson was offered uh, he was more than likely to hit some of the guarantees that were in them, but they weren't guaranteed from jump. Like there was some, like I think, what was it, 175 mil guaranteed for injury? It was something like that. So I'm over here getting Lynn off of the microphone in the middle of the video. But you know, anyway, anyway, um, I uh, I think that was one of them. One of them was a, a guarantee if he was on the roster on, I think, the third day or the fifth day of the league year in – Oh, yeah, in 2023, so three, four, five. So, yeah, I think in 2026, if he would be on a roster on a certain day of the league year, then another guarantee would kick in. Um, so, apparently, uh, it will still be those. And, like, with those, those are, um, they're not fully guarantees, if you get what I'm saying. They're likely guarantees, but they're not fully. Because I think with fully, it's like, hey, this is what it is. Regardless from jump This is what it is While those are likely guarantees That he most likely would get Like uh, um, Especially being on the roster On a certain day of the league year It's not fully guaranteed Now I know it's been said Oh yeah if Ravens were to cut him Then they would have a massive uh, They would have massive dead money and whatnot. So they, like most likely he would be there But still it's not fully guaranteed it's most likely to get that guarantee, but it ain't fully guaranteed. I, I think that is what has been a big part of this whole holdup. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's, it's, it's been something. We, we, a lot of us are learning. We learn more and more every day about contracts, man. I love it, though. I appreciate it. I appreciate the, uh, the insight, the knowledge, because everything that we're learning from this whole ordeal, that'll help us in the future for, for any other contracts that we may talk about. Or if, if somebody signs a deal, then we, we can understand better uh, how good or bad that deal is equipped when it comes to guaranteed money and da 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 So, yeah, this, this is a learning process for all of us. So I'm appreciating this right. And the last question came from my guy, Juan G, who's been a patron for six months. So appreciate you, Juan. He said, is there just a purple cloud over Baltimore right now in Graven? Just left and right, I never read anything good lately. Ravens are broke, memes saying the Ravens are signing nobody. Uh, the same kind of offseason we've been experiencing the last few years, just silent at the beginning with good players being released, whatever players resigning. I wouldn't say over the past couple of years. I mean, remember last year? Remember last year, Marcus Williams, that was big. Like, and I was proud of the Ravens for that because they signed an outside free agent going into his prime, not coming out of his prime, 
But going into his prime, they signed somebody on the outside of the from from the outside of Ravens organization. Going into his prime, and I, I was just like, "Wow, I can't believe this. This is so not Raven." But I loved it. Um, and last last off season, what they re-signed Pat Ricard. That was like when they did that. It was like, "Okay, Giro's gonna be back, and that same offense is gonna be back." Uh, Morgan Moses. Um, who else did they bring in? I, I, I can't remember who else off the top of my head. But anyway, um, they said the same kind of offseason we've been experiencing the last few years. Just silent at the beginning with good players being released, whatever players resigning. Not even really major signing, just kind of getting the leftovers of free agency. Like, what is going on? I'm hoping I'm not jinxing it, but is the rebuild, is it rebuild time in Baltimore? You're not jinxing anything because jinxing isn't real. So you ain't got to worry about that. Um, but then what's going on is, again, the Lamar. Hold the, the 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 Lamar contract. That's just that's the holdup right now. That's it. That's 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 the big holdup. Even though like again, Ravens don't ever go crazy in free agency. They 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 don't do that. Regardless if Lamar was signed or not signed, they don't ever go crazy in free agency. Um, but that's what everything is. So much is waiting on. Um, he said, uh, lose our quarterback, no money to sign anyone, and be in the quarterback market again, and be forced to change the philosophy because it's apparent it's not working. Oh, and we'll, we'll see how Todd Munkin does on offense. We'll, we'll see how that, that offense does for the Ravens. Since 2012, it's declined. Uh, had one major spike in 2019 and now kind of on the downslope again. I don't know, man. I'm worried. Give us some reassurance, please. I feel like I'm speaking for the fan base because there definitely is a blue feeling going around as we're watching everything unfold. Mm. Powerful message right there from my guy, Juan. Um, we don't know. We don't know what it's going to be. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to go down next. We're just waiting. All of us are just waiting. Just waiting to see what's next. Waiting for the next big announcement, the next big domino to fall. And it's a possibility that with the Lamar thing, because, again, that's obviously the biggest thing that we're waiting on. It's a possibility that he could play out on the tag. That's real possible. He could play out this season on the tag, on a non-exclusive franchise tag. Um, I don't anticipate him doing that. I don't think he would do that, but it's a possibility. Uh, so it's just so much that we don't know. Could the Ravens go into rebuild mode? They could, but that would obviously be if they traded Lamar away, um, which would be unfortunate, uh, but it would be a reality. They would go into rebuild mode, start over at quarterback, um, and whether they just decided to go roll with Tyler Huntley for this year, and then next year they drafted somebody they really liked. Or if they were able to get somebody this year that they really liked. Obviously, you, you know they've looked at all of that. You know they've looked at all the quarterbacks coming out this year. And thought about all the possibilities and whatnot. Um, so we'll see. Exit out the door. 